Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name's Jack and today I'm very excited because we've got a special set I've been looking forward to for a long time. The Batman Classic TV Series Batcave. The set is recommended for ages 14 and up. It is set number 76052 and it has 2,526 pieces. It included our whopping nine minifigs. We have Batman, Bruce Wayne, Robin, Dick Grayson, Alfred, Pennyworth, Catwoman, the Joker, the Penguin, and the Riddler. And there's a ton of stuff that comes in this set. We've got three different bat vehicles, a bat helipad, the study, and this leads down to the bat cave with a ton of stuff inside. There's a lot of stuff to build. I'm super stoked and I bet there's a ton of bags inside. So as you can see, there's a ton of bags. They're labeled up to the number eight, but there's a lot of repeats here. There's five bags over here with plate pieces that uh, don't have numbers. And we've got a few Twizzler pieces and a bag with our stickers and what looks like one gigantic manual. There's a lot of stuff to build here. Let's get started right now. So we finished bags one and two. We've got this awesome Batmobile here. Uh, most of the entrance to the Batcave and a couple of the minifigs, but we're gonna move on to the study now and I have a feeling that's gonna be my favorite part of the build. So I finished up to bags four so far and we have the nuclear reactor done. Uh, next is gonna be moving on to a bunch of the cave building around it and uh, it's a really cool build so far.
this was an intense build, but I'm absolutely loving it. There's so much stuff here. Let's start with the minifigs and figure it out from there. It seems appropriate to start with Batman, and this is a really awesome minifig. The body is like a light gray or grayish blue with dark blue gloves and dark blue dual molded legs. Now there's no crazy bat armor like you've seen with other Batmans, but that's simply because this 1966 Adam West Batman didn't have a bunch of crazy armor, but he is definitely expertly detailed. He's got a simple bat belt with a nice gold belt buckle, and underneath the cape the detailing is also printed onto the back. And the printing on the legs is really good. It's funny you can see he's wearing his bat kind of underwear, but I really like they printed the points of the boots on the legs there. It makes the dual molded legs look a lot better. Batman comes with some equipment. He's got his Batarang, and the set comes with a few extra, which is a nice touch. And he's also got a rope with a grappling hook. No grappling gun. I'm pretty sure in the show he just swung a rope with a hook around. He comes with a couple of good expressions. One is his angry face, ready to brawl. And the other one is a bit of a quizzical smirk. And the printing on his mask also matches that of the show. You'll note the strange looking eyebrows and the nose flap, so Adam West's face would be more comfortable when wearing the mask. And he also has a very nice soft cloth cape. He might already be my favorite Batman minifig. And let's take a quick look at Bruce Wayne now. He's wearing a dark blue suit with some very nice detailing on the chest. Bruce Wayne comes with two expressions. One's a small smirk and the other looks very confused. And he also comes with a brown comb over. But let's take a look at the boy wonder. Yep, and here is classic Robin. The costume was pretty simple back then and the detailing shows that really well. He's got dual molded arms to show his short green sleeves and printing on the fronts and sides of his legs to show off his boots and speedo. Robin's yellow cape is soft cloth as well. And I like that it comes a little bit shorter. He's got two expressions. One's kind of his confident game face, and the other one looks a bit shocked or scared, both with his mask. And let's check out his alternate or regular identity. This is Dick Grayson, the faithful ward of Bruce Wayne. The minifig is pretty simple, but there's a couple of nice details here. He's got his blue pants and red sweater, and I like that that simple detailing of the sweater also goes onto the back of the minifig. He's got two expressions as well. One's a slight smirk with a raised eyebrow, and the other one is definitely a scared face. But here is one of my favorite minifigs. We've got the Joker. He's got a pink suit with slight darker pink hands and the printing for this suit is really awesome. You can see he's got a three-piece suit with a bow and some silver buttons and the pinstripes go all the way down the front and sides of the legs. Now the printing for the face is pretty funny. One is a very big evil grin and the other one is a very shocked or intrigued face and you can almost hear the sound he's making with this face. But an interesting detail to note, if you look closely at the Joker you can see he's got a little bit of a mustache and I actually learned this from watching the Lego designer video on this but the actor that played the Joker refused to shave his mustache so he just painted it white. And when you watch the old episodes and you're looking for it, you can totally see he actually does have a mustache. And there's a couple accessories here for the Joker. He's got a beaker full of green liquid and some handcuffs for when he gets caught. Now the acting for the Joker was over the top and it pretty much was for all of the characters in this show. But I think this next guy totally takes the cake. Here we have the Riddler. The detailing is very simple. He's got a green body with lavender gloves and detailing for a lavender belt. You can see a nice big question mark on his chest and back. And he comes with two expressions. One is a very evil looking grin, and the other one looks a bit disgruntled. And he also comes with some light brown slick back hair. Our third and final villain of the set is the Penguin, who actually legally owns an umbrella shop in the show. He's all black with white gloves, and the printing for the torso piece is really good. You can see he's got a tuxedo that's busting at the seams a little bit, and underneath you can see detailing for a vest, buttoned up shirt, and a lavender bow tie to match his top hat. And of course he's got printing for a monocle, evil grin, and he's got those short stubby legs. And here we have another classic character who's always blurring the line between good and bad, it's Catwoman. The body is all black, and the detailing on the torso piece shows a big gold necklace and a gold belt. And there's also gray printing of some negative space to show off her hips. She's got two expressions, one with her cat mask and she's smiling, and one without her cat mask, and she's got that smile pulled to one side. But the hair piece is pretty awesome. She's got this long brown sort of bouncy looking hair with a couple of little black cat ears sticking out the top. And in good Catwoman style, she does come with a whip. Now our last minifig is the faithful Alfred. And I think the detailing for this guy is probably the simplest. He's wearing a black suit with some pretty straightforward detailing on there. And the printing on the face is pretty good. He comes with two expressions. One is sort of a blank stare and the other one has a small smile. But the combination of wrinkles on the face, glasses, and a white mustache make the face printing pretty good. And if he came with a white suit, I think he'd make a pretty good Colonel Sanders minifig. Alright, we've finished with the minifigs now. To the Batcave! 
Funny or not funny, I spent the time to edit that transition, so it's going in there. Now all the structures in this set are actually three modular buildings. I'm going to start off with the private study because it is the coolest, but I'm basically going to follow the order in which I built everything. And the study here looks awesome. Let's start off here with the coolest and newest piece, which is this awesome wallpaper printing that you see in the back. Now the design itself looks great, but I really like how it was made in a way for everything to match up. The design doesn't only match when you stack the pieces, but it also works if you put them side by side, or if you stack them offset by two studs even like bricks. I hope we see some cool custom building with this stuff in the future. But I think my favorite part of the study is this desk here in the front. There's a sticker detailing that shows a case file on Mr. Freeze and some unanswered clues. We've also got the classic red phone that's a direct line to the police commissioner and the statue bust which flips back to show the button for accessing the bat cave. This is very cool but the statue flips back and you can slide the bookcase out to reveal the poles. And I always thought it was funny that they put their name tags on the poles so they don't get confused. But hold on we're not leaving the study just yet there's a lot of really cool stuff still. I like that we've got portraits of Bruce Wayne's parents on either side of the walls there, and they're in between some nice little lamps. Above the bookcase is a fish. We've also got some trophies and a very awesome hardwood floor underneath the desk. This spinning globe is pretty cool too. Now everything else in this build will take place pretty much in the Batcave underground. So let's take a quick look at the detailing for the outside of the mansion before we get into all that. If you flip the study directly around, you're looking at the roof. And right on the top, you can see some stone birds, a bit of railing pieces right on the top there, and of course, a TV antenna. Now there's a few great and tile pieces to break up the look of the roof just a little bit, but it gets really good when you move down. There you can see a little gutter for the edge of the roof. And here's a slice of what the outside of the mansion looks like. And it looks really good. We've got a lot of nice tan and red brown pieces and they make up a pretty good looking design that goes around the windowsills and even when you take a closer look at the windows they look pretty awesome you can see the curtains are all tied off a little bit with some gold and of course we've got some ivy growing by the sides there was a lot of time and effort spent on this side of the build and I really appreciate that especially considering it's not really the featured side of the build so let's turn it back around and we're gonna slowly enter the bat cave you can see immediately below the study we've got a lot of hanging bats and builds for some rocky bits and it looks good very cave like now when you move down a bit you've got even more builds for some rocks and stalactites or stalagmites and it definitely makes this area a little bit more interesting to look at. And at the bottom, you can see where Batman and Robin land from sliding down the poles. Now, these are the same sliding poles that you would get in any fire set or firehouse headquarters set. And you'll notice that they aren't actually attached to the sliding poles from the study above. I think the designers chose to do this because it saves a bit more space in the build. And I, for one, think it's a really good idea that they're not actually connected. But you do have this nice semi-hidden function here. You can set Batman and Robin up on these little planks. And then when you pull the lever, they both slide into action at the bottom. A fun little function, well built, and I couldn't imagine them not having it in this set. But let's move on to the main area of the Batcave now. And you can see our focus here is the nuclear reactor. That is right, Batman's Batcave was indeed nuclear powered. I like our little sticker piece here, keep off atomic pile. And that is a good sign to have. I do remember one of the small Bat villains falling into the reactor and she straight up explodes. But the build for this is actually really good. At the core we have all these gold grate pieces and a lot of printed on smooth tile pieces. And I like the combination of highly detailed technical gauge pieces next to a very ancient film reel printed on piece. This was the 60s and moving film reel always did look super high tech back then. The side walls are very rocky and jagged and there's this very huge rocky arc bit over the top. And I really like that they add that piece. Definitely adds to the cave-like atmosphere. And really quick, let's take a look at the back of this thing. I like that the rock archway still has some toothed pieces that stick out. Just another little extra bit of dimension to the build. And of course there are four big support beams and in the front of the reactor we have some control panels. But there's some great control concepts detailing here that you can't really see that well so I'm gonna take them out of the build for a sec. Now these are all sticker pieces but the detailing on all these instruments are actually very similar to the ones that were in the show. The designers went to great lengths to keep as much of the detailing as accurate to the show as possible. Now we'll get on to the last bit of the cave but I just have to talk about the Batmobile now. This thing is awesome. The most iconic part of course are these giant splayed fins in the back and believe it or not the actual car has bigger fins than this one but they look very good. These are technically posable pieces but it's intended for you to have them stuck at a splayed out angle. The driver and passenger seat have their own windshields as well as glass covering in the back. It almost looks like two different cockpits. In the actual pilot and co-pilot spot, there's a lot of stuff going on. Of course, there's a steering wheel, but you can also see a phone, a bat phone, and in Robin's seat, you can see in front of him, there is an orange piece with a sticker that reads Detectoscope. Now this car can do about a million things, but I don't remember what that was actually used for, but I'm sure it helped in detecting. But I really like the emergency bat turn lever that you see in the top. Stop. 
We've got these tubes sticking out the back at an angle. In the show, there are actually three tubes, and they shoot out fireworks as an anti-theft device. And in the back, we have a nice little antenna, which is actually attached to the trunk that opens, but inside is very little trunk space. And in the back, we've also got our jet rocket booster and some exhaust pipes. Moving around to the front, right in between the windshields, we have a small little golden antenna, and even a small feature for playability, two stud guns. They're not too obvious, I don't think they look too bad on the build, but if you don't like them, they're extremely easy to remove. The shape of the front of the car looks pretty good, but I really like the bat symbols on the tires. There's some very nice printed on pieces. Very, very cool car. But let's check out the last bit of the cave. And this is a convenient place to start with it. This is where you park the Batmobile. Though the ramp is not at a harsh angle, it is funny to note that the car actually scrapes the ground a little bit when it drives in. Now the rocky bit of detailing is very similar on the front and back, but let's move on up to the helipad. And this symbol here is made up of two very large stickers, which I actually spent a very long time trying to get to look just as accurate as possible. You can also see some rocky areas that stick up a little bit past the helipad, which aesthetically I think look nice, but logistically seem very unsafe for landing a helicopter, especially if they have these giant bat wings sticking out the side. This bat copter is awesome looking though. It looks very good in red and black, and I like this dome piece in the front. And that bat on the front of the dome is actually a printed on piece. We've got space for one minifig in the front with some control levers. And on either side of the cockpit, we've got some extra tanks. I think they're gas tanks, and they have little bat stickers. There's also a couple of little angled jet boosters just behind there, and that leads to the tail. That's a perfect piece that they use for the tail, and I like that they have a big rear rotor blade. Despite the somewhat comical look of of the chopper. I think the proportions of the build are actually a little bit more accurate than some of the other LEGO choppers. And there's that back fin piece, which is a sticker. A really awesome retro vehicle and it looks great next to the Batmobile. Now we've finished all the stuff with the cave, but there's still some really cool stuff left to check out. Let's finish off the last vehicle. Here we have the Bat Bike with sidecar. Pretty standard looking motorcycle, but I really like this little sidecar buggy. It's mostly black, but I like that they kept with the color scheme by adding that tiny little bit of red in the front. And in the back we've also got a spare tire, as well as a little bit of Bat Flare. A fun little vehicle, but let's check out all these extras. Here's a great machine. We've got a lie detector, and it is as cheeseball-y as it gets. And this is a great graphic example of how silly the actual show was. And here we've got something that looks like a tape player, maybe it's a recording machine. And when you open that little hatch at the bottom, you can see we've got a bunch of extra pieces of tape. But I like these two builds here, this very sort of wacky science scene going on. One is simply a layered set of trays, and on them are a bunch of different vibrantly colored vials. And the last table is pretty cool here. We've got some different vials and jars, but also this little stand that holds the chemical and there's a magnifying glass for taking a closer look. I really like how the magnifying glass actually works. Now I may have forgotten to mention, I guess it's the Riddler, but it could be any of the villains. They come with some dynamite. We've also got a cat that I guess you could place on the roof or in the study. And we've got what looks like another wooden filing cabinet. So I think we've covered it all. Here is the entire set together. This is an extremely awesome set. A lot of time and effort went into this thing to make it look as good as possible. And part of me thinks that the designers put such an awesome amount of effort into this is because we're probably not getting another 1966 Batman set. Maybe ever again. So it's really great to see that they put a lot of time and effort into both the minifigs and the design of all these awesome scenes. So that's the episode. Thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to buy the set, you can click the link in the video description below. If you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe and we will see you next time at Brick Vault.